Hello and welcome to part two of this macOS app development series. I hope you guys have been following along and we'll continue to make our macOS application. So let's create a new Swift UI view and we'll just call this filter. Next, we'll add the user data property as an environment object. And I'll update the preview provider with the same. And uh, let's get rid of this placeholder. And here we can just add a horizontal stack. And inside that stack, I'll just add a toggle. So we have added a toggle so that the user can view only the favorite landmarks and we have given this a suitable text. So let's resume the preview window. And yes, our toggle has been set. Now let's create a new structure that is filter type which can hold one of the landmark categories and a corresponding name. And we'll make sure that this is conforming to the hashable protocol so that when you pick up the filter type as a selection in a picker, you'll use the same name when labeling the picker selection choices. Now let's create initializer functions for our filter type structure. Now we can just define an all type which represents no filtering. And after that we'll just make our filter type struct to conform to the case iterable and identifiable protocols which will make it possible for us to use the filter type structure as a data in a for each initialization. So we'll add those up here. So after adding case iterable, we'll just add a new variable here. Which is all cases. So this function will adopt the case iterable protocol and will provide a list of all the possible cases. Next, we'll just add the identifiable protocol and a new ID for this so that it conforms to the identifiable protocol. So our filter type struct is complete. Now back to our filter view. So in our filter view, I'll just add a picker that uses a binding to an instance of a filter type for that selection and the filter type names for the menu choices. So back to our filter view, I'll just add a picker that uses the binding instance of the filter type for a selection and the filter type names for the menu choices. So for that, I'll just create a binding variable of filter type here. And inside our edge stack, I'll just make a new picker. And I'll just add a spacer between the picker and the toggle. And here I'll just add the missing argument, which is filter. And I'll set a constant value here for all cases. Okay, so this has been set up. Now back to our landmark list .swift file. I'll just add a new binding variable here of the same filter type. And as with the filter view, this will allow sharing with a parent view. In the preview provider as well, I'll add the filter constraint and set this to all cases. And let's update the logic here to include the category filtering. So after this, I'll just add an AND condition.
So we've added a few more if conditions here to limit the row creation. And next, let's combine the list and the filter views. So for that, let's create a new Swift UI view in our project. And we'll just call this navigation primary. And inside this, let's declare the filter state. So after adding the filter parameter here, we'll just bind this property to both the filter and the list views in the next few steps. Now let's add the filter view and bind this to the filter state. So in the body, we'll get rid of this and create a, create a vertical stack with the filter view. And let's resume our preview window. So as you might notice, the preview fails to build this because our filter view actually depends on the user data object in its environment. So we'll need to fix this in the next steps. So while the navigation primary struct doesn't need the user data directly, it has a sub view that does. And to enable the preview, we provide the user data as an environment object to the navigation's primary view. And then let's add the binding to the selected landmark. And we can add the missing arguments here for the selected landmark. So let's add the landmark list inside of our vertical stack. And we'll add a list style modifier to this and set its value to sidebar list style. And let's preview this. Okay, so this looks good. And we'll just add another modifier to our vertical stack to set the minimum width and maximum width. So that's it for this video. Make sure you guys subscribe so that you can follow along this tutorial. And I'll be dropping the part three of this tutorial series very, very soon. And soon we will have our fully functional macOS application. Thank you guys for watching.